Hi, everyone. As you know, I'm Hillary Topper, and this is We Are Endurance. Um, today's webinar is going to feature uh, or focus on rather nutrition and how to get through a race and, and really, you know, learn the ins and outs of how to do that. And Stacy Blanket is going to teach us. And I'm really grateful that she's here and mm -hmm. grateful for her time. And I just want to preface this by saying that Stacy has always been one of my heroes. Um, she, when I was, I used to be so nervous riding a bike. And when I saw her face and she was so happy and and just loving every moment of it, it got me thinking, wow, you know, I've got to just relax a little bit and just enjoy this. And she mutual, really mutual. Me, so thank you. You're so inspiring to everyone, Hillary, in yeah. every way. So yeah. I'm glad to be here to be able to contribute what I can to help you guys. So I'm going to let you take the floor and just talk away. Okay. Well, everybody here is... Um, either a runner or a triathlete or an endurance athlete at some, some distance, right? So we're all participating in the same sport. And endurance is a lot different than other sports because we need to prevail over time, right? So we can't just depend on a quick burst and then our, you know, our willpower, it doesn't work that way. Your body actually will stop you b before even your mind does. So we have to sort of be mindful of what are we going to do to prepare our body before we train and race um, quite in advance. Um, and then we have to talk about what we're going to do during our trainings to practice what we're going to be doing during our races. And then we have to train our bodies how do we recover from today so that we are uninjured and not at risk or depleted for tomorrow so it becomes complicated because we don't we work out almost every day right we do something almost every day so it's sort of like you can't put the clothes in the washer and the dryer and forget about them you have to take them out and move them and it's sort of the same thing our energy supplies have to be um continuous so m most times um, people worry when we're then doing sports, um, endurance sports, that we're going to be putting things into our bodies that are not healthy or that sort of are contraindicated to what really general nutrition you know, tells us to do. And that's the most important thing for us to focus on is that we need to eat and drink for our everyday life well, to keep our bodies working well, to keep our our you know metabolism elevated to keep our blood supply really prime but we have to realize that there's another bubble a little separate separate circle of nutrition which focuses on our training and racing and that's where that's where the dichotomy comes in because what we do on a normal day for example we are we we know that we need to eat um complex carbohydrates or a whole grain toast let's just say in the morning but when we're going to be having that preempting a workout that takes a long time for us to digest so we want to have a simple carbohydrate like potato bread or a plain waffle and that in our brain that tells us well that's really not healthy for me because i know i'm supposed to be eating complex carbohydrates so we say why are we eating and and when are we eating so if you're not working out in the morning and you're you know, going to be working out after work, let's just say, and you're going to work, you're going to take a complex carbohydrate that's going to give you a lot of energy, a slow release of energy to keep you full and keep you satisfied um, and have the benefits of the fiber and those types of things. But your body can't do 100 things at once all well. So if you have that complex carbohydrate and expect to go on a run, you're not going to get the energy in time right? And you can have the fiber that's going to slow down the digestion. So each each has its own benefit. So it's very important to just be able to separate ourselves from our general nutrition and what we know and learn, which we can discuss to keep us healthy so we can prevail. But then that um, little circle bubble of doing your workouts and ultimately your race, they are treated differently. And it doesn't mean that it's bad nutrition or contraindicated for our wellness. It means it's fulfilling the purpose. Does that make sense? Right. So, um, so yeah, so it's important to have, um, you know, 
our lifestyles are so busy, it's often a struggle to get food in all the time or to have it ready or to have it available um, on a whim. But if you plan out your day or your weeks um, with, with flexibility, nothing needs to be 100%. But if you plan it out so that you have, you start your, you break your fast, right? In the morning, as early as you can after getting up, you want to put something in your system. If you're not a big breakfast eater, it could be just a bowl of berries. It could be a half a yogurt and a little bit of granola, you know, something to start your metabolism. So your body starts waking up and knowing that you're, you're fueling it. It doesn't have to go into stores right away. Um, as athletes, we don't want to fast. Okay. We want to keep our foot gently on the gas pedal, a steady state of energy in and out, all day long with the focus around what we need when we need it. And we can dwindle that down at the end of the day when we're done with everything. So we're not storing over sleep, right? Overnight. Um, so it's important to know that you should have, you should try to eat every three, you know, hours, really something, a breakfast, a small snack between breakfast and lunch, a lunch, a snack between lunch and dinner, a dinner, and then possibly something in the evening, depending on what your schedule and your appetite is. Um, does that make sense? How many of you guys are doing that? Are you guys kind of giving your bodies some some food source every, or are you going to the point like a lot of us in our busy lives do? And I hear this all the time from my clients is that I can't find time to eat. I don't have a break. I can't, you know, um, and that and that that's life, right? But if you had a handful of almonds in a little, you know, a little zipper bag, a little snack bag, you could probably eat those, you know, just as just as if you need to go to the bathroom, you make time to do that. So this is something else your body requires. It requires an energy source. So you don't get super hungry because when you get super hungry, that's when your stress hormones, your cortisol gets out of whack. You start craving caffeine and sugar because especially in the afternoons, right? Do you guys feel that in the afternoon um, when you ha and, and you haven't had enough um, and then three o'clock or two o'clock comes four o'clock and you're like, you're crazy. And so you grab a coffee or you crave sugar but really that's your brain, your hunger center saying, you are not treating me well. I do not have enough. So I'm looking for a quick fix. And I'm I'm programmed from society to know that that quick fix is sugar or coffee, caffeine, right? So if we can if we can recognize that that's happening in our own lives, then we can say, I'm going to prevent that from happening. And so I'm going to if I'm really hungry or not, I'm still going to give myself some protein in the afternoon. So maybe that's a handful of nuts or a string cheese or a yogurt, um, something like that, or a hard boiled egg. And, you know, and we can talk about those options. But if you give yourself that, you're going to get to dinner and not also be starving. And so you're going to make very good choices and your body will not have that up, down, up, down, up, down, which is yeah, it's really hard to because then when you eat, you 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 go up, and then when you when you crash, you go so far down. It's like we want to stay at the equator. You know what I mean? We want to just stay balanced. We can have the little rises and falls, but for me, um, my own personal experience, when I'm not hungry and I'm not full, is when my body functions the best. Right? You got so how many of you guys have trouble kind of planning out your day? Now, I have a question for sure. you because I think that a lot of people, especially um, the runners in my, you know, run walk group, and unfortunately, they're not here and they should be, but yeah. well, I, maybe they'll see us. They'll see it. Um, they say to me, oh, I can't eat in the morning. I can't eat at all. But then they'll go for a run. And I don't know, for me, I have to eat something. Um, maybe so what do you choose, Hillary? What would so you for choose? For me, you I choose, I usually drink one of those um, pure protein shakes and that, and then I could just go and do my activity yeah. for the day, you know, and then come back and I'll have like a <clears> banana <throat> with protein powder and almond milk, you know, yeah. I kind of like mash it well, all together. And you're definitely, you're definitely right there on the right track Um, for, 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 pre-workout so if you're going to go for a run in the morning and you're not a breakfast eater then you would do a little swap you would kind of swap that morning snack and breakfast so you really just need between us i mean our bodies are all different size shapes and metabolic rate of burn so uh, for all of us anywhere between 100 and 150 calories is enough accessible energy to get through a weekday run right so run walk 
um, swim, bike. Uh, so that could be something so simple as um, a, a handful of grapes, you know, a little bowl of grapes. You don't have to eat a big breakfast. It could be most, I try to get most of my clients to eat carbohydrate in the simple form. So the protein is fantastic. It's giving you the the muscle, the muscle um, protection, but it's harder for you to use that protein for your workout. So you're probably yes. burning a lot more of your stores, but if you have good stores, you're not feeling it. Right. But I think a great improvement would be to have something like two fig Newtons. Um, oh, I didn't open it. That's why. What? Yeah. I going to mute him. He's on the phone. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. Okay. So either something like fig Newtons or two graham crackers or, um, you know, a half a cup of dry cereal, like a special K. It doesn't even have to be with milk. It could just be dry. You want a simple carbohydrate. Some people do saltines and a little jelly, uh, you know, a, a fresh jam. Um, it could be a Nutrigrain bar. I mean, those are one of those quick pickups that it's okay on your on your day to get to get you out the door and get you onto that run. So you have something to burn in the first 20 minutes before fat burn kicks in. That 100 to 150 calories is going to see you through. Um, so that works great. Usually for me, I'll take, you know, two fig newtons. That's what I will eat because A, I like them. So it's it's easier for me to eat something that I like when I don't really want to eat. Um, it could be a half of a banana. I would hold off on too much protein because it slows down the absorption of the carbohydrate. Protein and fat slow down, which is great in regular life because we want that. We want our food to move through you know, release nice and gently. So we get to squeeze every little bit out of that sponge, you know, those calories. But if you're going to go on a run um, or a swim or a bike, I would definitely go with a carbohydrate source. And again, the quickest thing is, you know, half a banana, a um, couple of crackers, a fig Newton, um, a plain frozen waffle, not a, not a protein waffle that you would eat on another day, but a plain waffle. You could just drizzle a teeny bit of real honey or maple syrup on it eat it in the car in your way and you're good. And then it directly after this leads us to the little swap. You're coming back from it. That's when that protein drink is essential because now you have the opportunity to repair any little micro tears that might've occurred that you don't know about. Um, and also re restock your protein source should you have burned any muscle. We want the muscle to always have a lot of fluid in it because that's how muscles work, right? The fibers rub off of one another. It's called a twitch. And if you're a little dehydrated, um, those muscles kind of stick. And that's how you kind of start building lactic acid and get cramps. So um, I think what you're doing is great. If it's And also the other thing is timing. So if you're gonna have um, a protein source and maybe a banana and you have more than 45 minutes before your workout starts, perfect. If you're like a half an hour or under, I would go with that quick energy, um, that quick energy source. Yeah. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. So that might be something like, look, I'm always big on make one change at a time and see how you react to it. Because if we change everything, it's hard to know what worked, right? So if you're going to go do your morning workouts the rest of this week, Try having a carbohydrate source. You don't want to have a heavy belly. You don't want to eat a ton of food. You look on a package and you see 100 to 150 calories of carbohydrate crackers, but not not like a, a, a you know a triscuit, not a complex wheat cracker. It has to be simple flour cracker, like a saltine, mm -hmm. um, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Or a slice of potato bread. And these are things that you think of, oh, these are just... These are useless carbohydrates, but they're useless if you're not exercising and burning through them and you're storing them. They're not useless if you're going for a run. So it's all about what and why. Make sense? Yeah. Jackie, you had a question? Jackie? No, I don't have a question. Oh, okay. I thought you had a Thank question. Thank you. Um, talk to us about snacks. So yeah. when we eat snacks, I was always under the impression that you should eat a snack, uh, protein and carb snack. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. Okay. So again, we, uh, that's a great question because we don't know what to snack on, right? And we think that we should always snack on, you know, maybe 
low fat, you know, always watching calories because that you look, look, calories are a measure. All calories are, are a measure of energy. How much does that food give you? Now, there are calories that you can use really quickly and that are beneficial and that come along with micronutrients, which are, let me back up, macronutrients. We're talking about protein and carbs. So let's start at the beginning and talk about macronutrients so we understand. There are proteins for muscle endurance and restoration. There are carbohydrates for energy source. They're your main energy source. There are fats for healthy brain function and cell regulation. Um, healthy fats also help everything move through your system and they help with cognitive um, functioning. And then there's colorful, you know, fruits and vegetables. And those are those are something that people don't necessarily consider a priority. We know we need to eat fruits and vegetables, but people think protein and carbohydrate, you know, and let's have low fat, right? But the thing is that some of these foods, and especially the colorful fruits and vegetables, they have something called micronutrients in them, which are your vitamins and minerals, okay? Vitamins and minerals have no calories attached to them at all. So if we're only looking at a nutrition plan or a focus that counts calories, creating a deficit or a surplus, right? Gaining or losing past your basal metabolic rate, which is what your body needs just to function with no exercise. It's a number of calories that we can compute and I can show you guys how to do that. Um, but if we're only looking at calories, we're, we're excluding the most important thing, which are these micronutrients, um, iron, you know, calcium, you know, vitamin D, vitamin C, all these, all these elements that make our system just work better. So if we don't focus on foods that have those, even though they have no calorie count to them, we're missing out on elevating our body. So if our body works really well, including our metabolism, how we process food and move through our functions, then if we can elevate that, we don't have to worry about decreasing the calories because we're going to burn at a higher rate. So people that diet and um, and really work for that calorie deficit and they reach the point where you can't take any more away. You know what I mean? How little can you eat? Um, and those are the people that as soon as I start feeding them and they start taking in foods that have a real legit vitamin and mineral composition, their metabolism goes up and they start losing their they just lose, you know, the fat that they wanted to burn off by depleting their body. So something really important, you guys want to maybe write this down or just keep it as a mantra is inclusion versus exclusion, right? Inclusion versus exclusion. What can I include versus what I just don't have? Most times people will say, I don't know why I'm not healthy. I don't know why I'm not, you know, whatever their goal is. I don't eat this. I don't eat that. I don't eat this. And I'm like, but what? What do you eat? Because if you're excluding all these things, there are, if you're excluding sugar completely and you're you're putting fruit into that category, you have just lost so many micronutrients by removing that food group that it, it like makes me sad. You know, like we just don't know these things. So when it comes to the snacks, just circle back. We want to pick snacks, um, and truly, we want to pick our meals also um, in a portion that satisfies our hunger. And that's something that I really do want to talk about, which I have written down that I want to discuss with you guys um, when we get to that. But let's take the portion and how much we're eating and put that to the side. Let's focus on the quality, okay? Because we need to learn what 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 you know what David may need to get full and satisfied might be really different than what ja what Jackie does. I mean, it, it, we're not all the same. You can't compare a woman's metabolism to a man's, even if they're the same height and the same weight. Um, conversely, you can't take two women that are the same height and weight and age and everybody's bodies just, we all have history and our, our organs all work differently. So it's, it's satiation and knowing when you're, when you're satisfied versus stuffed, um, or, or so hungry that you stop because you just don't want to eat too much. Um, you're an athlete and you want to, you think, you know, being lean is going to make you stronger, faster. Um, you want to be healthy and you want to have your muscles as um, healthy and strong as possible. And when you deplete yourself from calories, guess what our body burns? It goes to muscle and it uses the muscle. And, and that's, that's contraindicated to any of our, any of our goals, I'm sure. So, so getting back to the snack question, right? Ideally, the philosophy is we would love to have snacks be a mini meal, right? And it could be a tiny amount, 
Um, but if we could get all the components that we need in each one, because they work together, the protein, the carb, um, and the healthy fat, and some colorful green or red fruits or vegetables, right? But if it's the morning snack, right? And now you have you have worked out, but you still have a lot of day to get through and you need energy. The focus should be higher on carbohydrates, okay? So um, I'll give you an example. And then in the afternoon, if you're, um, you know, cognitively needing that energy, just like I was just sharing with you guys about, you're just tanking, you're so tired. That's when the protein needs to have the higher percentage of the snack. So let's take yogurt, for example, and let's make a snack based on yogurt. We use one, one item of food. So we'll take yogurt, which has, um, it has protein in it, right? It has some sugar in it and not even if it's, even if it's unsweetened yogurt, it has sugar in the milk fat in it. The same thing with a non-dairy version of coconut milk yogurt, or almond milk yogurt. So we have protein and we have some healthy fat, right? So if we're having in the morning, we'd want to add carbohydrate to that because we still need energy. So we would add a carbohydrate, which could either be some fruit, right? If you're going for a plant-based version, um, it could be some crackers. It could be some pretzel flats. It could be um, some granola, right? Without without nuts and it just, you know, some mucilli um, and put that in your granola, in your yogurt, I'm sorry. So now you've taken the 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 carbohydrate and pumped up the, the percentage in that snack, okay? Um, a lot of my clients will eat, you know, cottage cheese and, you know, some fruit and maybe sprinkle a little bit of granola on top or a little yogurt parfait. And we're talking like, you know, it could be small. It could be three to four ounces of yogurt. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot. If you're hungry, it could be five or six ounces of yogurt. It depends on you. Let's take that yogurt and put it in the afternoon when now we want more protein, right? So now we have protein because we started with that yogurt um, or cottage cheese, which is a great, a great um, an overlooked food source. So now we have that protein base. That's our base. Now we want to add, instead of adding more carbohydrate, we want to add more protein to that. So that's where we would add nuts, right? We would add some nuts or we would take um, some sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds or flax seed. Um, and we'd have that, or we'd add a hard boiled egg on the side with that. Uh, maybe, you know, one or two crackers. So you want to just look at where the per major percentage, because most foods are not going to fall into one thing or the other. You're not going to have a food that's going to be 100% protein or 100% carbohydrate. Um, even a protein like chicken, you think you're having grilled chicken and that's all protein, but there's healthy fat in that, right? So you're, you're not, it's not exclusively one thing or quinoa. We might think that that's a grain, which is carbohydrate, but it's very high in protein. Um, and there are two grams of fat in a serving of quinoa. So we want to go with the with the with the dominant priority. And if we do that and we and we were able to add um, maybe in the afternoon, we're going to have some plain Greek yogurt. Right. Maybe we'll have some raw vegetables and maybe we'll have a hard boiled egg. Make yourself a little tray or a little baggie. Um, in the morning, we might add the colorful fruits and vegetables. We might have the fruit there. Um, maybe we'll have, you know, um, an apple, or you can even just use applesauce if you don't want the high fiber, that's fine. So there are different, I have lists that I can send you, Hillary, and you can share um, morning snack, afternoon snack what, what, for athletes, because um, we're, we're, we're a species upon ourselves, onto ourselves. So does that make sense to you guys? Does that help anyway? Yeah, because just eating like lots of pretzels, let's just say in the afternoon, like you're at your desk and you bought this bag of honey wheat pretzels, which you know are a decent a decent snack, right? But if you added a string cheese and a handful of pretzels, you know, and maybe a couple of, you know, pepper slices, or you had some hummus, right? You bought the little containers of hummus and you dipped some carrots in it, you know, or some pretzels, had them all. Um, that's how you balance it out and you keep your athlete body fueled correctly. It's hmm. good. Mm. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, does that make sense to you guys? How to kind of put those things together? And would you like, I could send you that list, Taylor, and you could share it with, with everyone. Yeah, it's a, it's a little document. Talk to us. Um, you know, it's funny because a lot of people I know, um, they go on these like crazy fad diets, you know, where <laughs> they, you know, where it's like a thousand calories. I mean, you know, and, and a and many are athletes. I mean, it, it's not like they're, you know, they're just every, I mean, they're athletes like us. 
and they're going on a thousand or twelve hundred calories. I mean, I just to me, it's mind blowing. I mean, it's just yeah, I see it every day. It's um, it's really not healthy. Or maybe they'll lose the weight, but then they can't keep it off, you know, and that becomes an issue. But talk to us about how you work. I know you have your own business um, doing this, you know, like how, how do you work with clients? Yeah. Um, so look, athletes are people, uh, you know, first, we're all the same. And we have this, you know, this image that we want to look the part, but you, we don't have x-ray vision, right? So you can't see inside. You can see someone who looks like when I, when I do Ironman races or I, or I spectate or any race, a marathon to a 5k, there are people that look completely different on the outside. And it, it really does sit, badly with me when when people say this person i can't believe if that person can do what i can do do you ever hear these comments like oh, yeah. It, yeah it's, it's yeah. right if that person can do it i can do it i'm like you are judging somebody on the outside you have no idea how strong their heart lungs muscles and intentions <laughs> are and you know what if they if you have a little bit extra that percentage on your body and you're able to train yourself to carry that weight around then you're doing fantastic. I mean, there's not, there's not, we have to break that myth that you have to look like an athlete to be an athlete. It, it's just wrong. And it's not, a, it's not an explanation to the health and the wellness and the potential. So having said that, because that's really important because food, food and weight um, in our culture. And uh, I mean, I think obviously in other cultures too, but here in the United States, especially is so driven by, um, you know, uh, by emotion people eat emotionally people restrict eating emotionally and so my clients come to me for all different reasons um a great majority are athletes and but they're people first and what do people tend to do they tend to yo-yo because they restrict that goes back to that inclusion versus exclusion when you exclude all sugar all sweets all alcohol but when you exclude it, eventually you're like, I need, you know? And so that's when those people, um, the emotional eating comes back and they, they've, you know, a lot of these, these challenges, these 75 day challenges, these intermittent fasting challenges, all these things, they have an end date on them. It's not forming a new pattern. It's just how long can you have willpower for? And that's not what life is about. We can't, we the, the worst thing to do is to go up and down by a lot. Now, having said that, you know, a typical person, athletes included, we can gain or lose 5% of our body fat. And that keeps us in the same parameters of wellness, 5%, right? So if you weigh 200 pounds and you go up and down 10 pounds, that is like the ideal fluctuation is, is that small amount. It's not a lot. And if you don't look, when we get right before a race and we really leaned out because our body is demanding more than we're giving it, conversely, some people, when they're training, like Hillary, you and I had, had mentioned, you had mentioned to me, talked to me about how do we not eat the house when we're, when we're training, people actually gain weight training for marathons and endurance events. And because that's because they're not doing this bubble that I talked about of before, during and after the actual workout. So, um, so yeah, so the clients that come to me are all different, but the one thing that most have in common is I try to find out the root of their relationship with food and it becomes, it really becomes that once that recognition is what is my relationship with food, right? So let, let's do this as a little experiment. If we could, if we have the time, like, would like, what would you say is your relation? Like one word, how you view food. Does anybody want to volunteer? I'll volunteer. I eat it when I'm hungry. Hungry. So you're so food to you. Mine is hunger. Yeah. Hunger. Yeah. That's great. I mean that that is what food is intended to do is to take away your your physiological hunger. Doesn't mean that we don't enjoy some things more than others. So if a client comes to me and they're having issues with hunger. Now that's, that's, that's a whole nother thing. It's like, I'm always hungry, but are you? Because now this segues me into what I really wanted to chat with you guys about, which is the difference between fueling your body and filling your body. 
Okay, so let's talk about this. You're you're gonna have 400 calories for lunch or 500 calories for lunch, let's just say. And you're gonna have those four or 500 calories at a fast food place, right? You're full after you've eaten your burger fries and you're cool, okay? You're full, you're done, you had lunch. I mean, you're not feeling proud that it was the right choice, but it worked for the day, that's where you were. Or you're gonna have 500 calories worth of a piece of salmon on a salad with some quinoa on it with a couple of squares of dark chocolate on the side, right? The difference is that it goes back to that micronutrient word. There is no vitamin and mineral content in your fast food that can compare to what um, <laughs> better choice, right? So that's when it becomes nutrition and fuel versus just filling up your tummy. Um, does that make sense to you guys? right? So once we figure out why we're making the choices we're making, look, we all have different appetites. We all have different likes. I have a food checklist that I give to all my clients, every potential clients, everything on that list is food that, that gives benefit. So I ask them to check off anything that you currently eat or you would consider eating. So now I know that, you know, um, pineapple is a hard no, um, you know, I can't live without, you know, turkey cold cuts. Okay. Write that in, you know? So now I see where, what they're, what do we have? What is their toolbox, right? Some people despise vegetables. They just don't like them. Okay. But we can get the same micronutrients from different things. We can get them from juice. We can get them from fruits. We can get them um, from some carbohydrates. We can get them from different choices of protein. So there's always a way to find what we need um, without forcing forcing people to eat like here this is what an athlete should eat and if you don't like salmon and a sweet potato and broccoli i can't help you like who's that going to work who's that going to help you want to look forward to food food is um it's it's a pleasurable thing right it, it's a social thing but it's also enjoyable so you want to eat foods that that appeal to you and there are so many that cover i can if somebody says i'm a, a horrible eater i'm like I'm up for the challenge because I will find things that you like that are going to fill fulfill your needs. So, um, so that's the difference with fueling your body and filling up, right? Um, you will feel so good. A lot of times my clients are like, wow, I didn't know how tired I really was or how low energy I really was until I started eating more things that you're telling me to eat, you know, to include more things. You can still have the, the chocolate. Don't exclude it. But if you include the foods that, you know, your liver can burn fat really, really well. It's That's what it's one of its goals, one of its functions are. But the primary function of your liver is to detox your body. So if you give your body all these chemicals and all these foods that it doesn't recognize and artificial sweeteners in your fat-free yogurt and your fat-free, you know, and your sugar-free soda and all those things, your liver is going to stop burning fat because it needs to detox you first. That's that's why it's in your body. So by your liver or alcohol in extreme, right? This is why people get fatty livers because what happens is their liver, your liver stores glycogen, which is a, sh a sugar form of carbohydrate and your muscles do also. So when you eat um, a bagel, you you the, the carbohydrates turn into sugar. You burn them if you're eating the bagel before you work out. But if you're just sitting in the bagel store and then you have a very sedentary day ahead, you will store that for future use, because your body is really smart. It wants to have this energy all the time for you. So it doesn't eat your muscle. So so if your liver um, slows down on burning fat, right? Because the, the carbohydrates are gonna turn into fat if you don't use them. They will sit long enough and then, then store in fat. So if your liver can't burn fat, then it's gonna just, it's gonna stop doing that, but it's gonna detox you first. If you don't make your body, your liver have to detox quite as much, right? Because you can't, you can't avoid all the toxins in our environment. But if you can mindfully eliminate the ones that we can control, and your liver can be like, oh, cool, I can pass this through. This is great. I am, I'm having an easy day detoxing Hillary today. Um, then it can go ahead and burn fat. And that's how you stay lean. Um, you don't stay lean by eating artificial preservatives and sugars and additives and fat free products because your liver will not burn fat. So does that make sense? Yeah, so so we don't want fat free anything. We want organic um, ingredients like like fats in in milk products or dairy. I'm using that as an example that your body could recognize. Your liver says, "Yep, pass that through. I recognize that milk sugar." You know what I mean? That kind of thing. 
So yeah, so client, so going back to the question with clients, everybody's different, but I try to get into the behavioral side of it. And then once I get that part of the puzzle, which is pretty quick to discern, then I can see what they're eating. Then I can see how much they actually are burning on a day of working out. So for example, David, if you're running, you know, two hours on, on Saturday, I'm going to ask to see how many calories your body burned on that run. Okay, that tells me how fast your metabolism metabolism is and what your needs are for that run. You can take in during that run up to two thirds of the calories you burn. So if you burn, we'll just use an even number. If you burned a thousand calories, right? You can take in 600 calories, but that's a lot of calories to take in. That's your max. If you're on the bike, it's a lot easier to take calories in, right? So we try to find, we try to push you to your body to train your gut. It's called training your gut on how to accept calories while you're training. Um, and we call it fuel, I call it fueling lean. So up to two thirds, but at least at least one third to 50% to of what you're burning. You can take that in. If you can train your gut to take that in, um, you're never going to be behind the eight ball and your energy should last you through the marathon or your, you know, your, your 5k, um, you know, if you, if we fuel you with one, you know, 100 calories, if you're burning 300 in a 5k, let's just say we can do that, but I have to analyze and know what your burn is. Cause some people run really high and some people run really low. Um, so that helps us not, not let you get too many calories in during training. And it also prevents that I'm starving. I can't handle my hunger because I'm training, I'm a marathon runner and I eat everything, right? Um, no, you just have to prepare for it um, and recover from it. So if you're gonna go out on that two hour run on Saturday, you're gonna have some carbohydrates before, you're gonna have some fuel during, you're gonna have your protein recovery after, you're gonna continue recovering those muscles with a little more protein at dinner, right? And then the next day you're good to go. So we just wanna keep it moving. You know, no, no shocks to the system. So once clients kind of get the idea that they can eat, they don't have to keep restricting and lowering because eventually you can't go. They're having a thousand calories, Hillary, right? Like how low can you go? How low can you go? You know? Um, and then also what happens when you're depleted is your brain is the last part of your body to get nutrition. The last part, because think about it. Um, somebody's in the hospital sick and they're eating. Well, the, what they're able to take in is going to go to their heart and their lungs and their essential organs. If they're foggy brained, like your body doesn't mind. In fact, people can be in a coma and not need their brain, you know, and then be woken up from the coma and they're fine because your body, your brain will conserve and take in, it can function on very little. But for in daily life, that's really unhealthy to have your brain depleted because you don't make good decisions. You don't you don't read your hunger signals well because your hunger center is located in your in your brain. And um, it's just, you know, you walk through in a fog. So once people start eating and getting the nutrition that is actually usable, they, you know, their bodies just their bodies just work so much better and their energy level is so much higher. So I'm all about, you know, consistently good. Be consistently good to your body all day. Keep your foot on that gas pedal. Um, as far as occasionally awesome where you're like, we had a great meal. And then, oh no, I didn't eat for like seven hours. You know what I mean? You're, you're just like, that. that is just so much, so much stress for our bodies. David has a question. Yeah, what do you have? Okay, so look, I'm like in a unique situation. First, you have my brain going all over the place because you said so many great things. Um, you know, you talked about 75, right? And that's 75 hard, that program you were talking about. And um, I do that, which is um, two workouts a day, both 45 minutes. And it very well, yep. Right? So, um, and it's not a it's not a diet. It's more like an a, a Iron Man for your mind, right? So, you know, I, a lot of my working out, being an endurance athlete, it's all up here. So, again, right, I got that going on. I work construction, so I burn fuel all day. I have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. And I just checked my A1C, and it was not 5.9, which is way high, right? Because I got it down to 
I drink a gallon of water a day, but there's something that I'm doing that is definitely, um, I'm bringing in a lot of sugar somewhere, somehow. Now, I'm a nighttime snacker. Like, at the end of the day, I do not drink. I do not do anything else, but I'm a nighttime. If, if I had a T-shirt, it would be like, donuts is my drug of choice. You know what I mean? What because is Because donuts is my, drug of cho- <laughs> is my drug of choice. Because I just like snacking. And um, I could be real disciplined all day, but at nighttime, that's like my, my glass is, of wine. All right. All right. I see you. I see you. But, 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 you. But, but, but remember, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm on 75 hard. So there's well, no. Excuse, I gotta, I right? gotta, I gotta put this to you. You're on 75 hard, sure. but part of 75 hard is choosing a nutrition plan that is healthy. And it also, 75 hard is no sugar and no alcohol. Right. So, but no, what are you following? No, no, what kind of nutrition plan you, did you choose? So I cut out like, I cut out things, right? And then I did whatever my body weight is times 15 as a maintenance and then another 500 to gain a pound of muscle a week. But I know that that's very rudimentary. That's yeah. so much so that I told my wife, I need to schedule a, an appointment with a nutritionist because evidently I'm doing something completely wrong. Yeah. How I'll am I going to go you. get blood work? Go ahead. I'm sorry to cut you yeah, off. Yeah, I'll tell Please, you, you. There's so much that I, that that's so important in what you're saying for for you and for everybody to hear. First of all, you um you you're doing what you what you're saying. You're saying you're doing really well all day, and then you get home and you're like, "What happens? The relationship with food it happens again." It's like I got through the day. I met my requirements really well at work. I took care of my family. I took care of my job. I took care of my body and now I'm home and I'm like off the clock, right? So now it's like, now I'm on the couch and I'm like, I deserve because I was, you, you're in your head, you're banking, you're banking goodies. You're banking, but you're taking jelly beans and you're putting them into a bowl and you're saying, I earned this. So, so what happens is that, go ahead. So I, there's this place called um, Bruce Seven. So I have a frozen yogurt, right? that that's one of my only snacks or or a bowl of cereal from um trader joe's like those are my things that i eat at the end of the day so it isn't any candy anything like that i just want to make that clear or cake or cookies because those things i love i just can't have them right now right but how about let me ask you this how many times have you done hard 75 i can't hear you you're muted sorry i did the i did 75 hard I did the whole Live Hard program last year, finished it, and then I started 75 Hard. I'm on day 24 today. Okay. So I've done it myself. So I know exactly what you're talking, what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you stopped it, there are 75 days that you, this is what we were talking about. You're hardcore. You're going for it, right? You're you're drinking your gallon of water. You're reading every day. You're um, doing two out two 45 minute workouts one of them are, I know the I know all of it you're keeping it together and you're you have this strength of mind I can see it in your personality that you're really strong you have a really good um, sense of commitment to things I could see that so what happens is that when you get to day 75 it's the same as you being at the end of the day you're you now you're on the couch and you're like you know theoretically and you're saying I hit 75 days and then the the challenge is over but if those patterns don't carry over and and again it's so it's so hard right it's called hard for a reason there's no wiggle room in that at all so then you're in or you're out and then you start it again so that that speaks to this right you you i can i can guess because i know lots of people who they do a program like this, or it, it's any kind of, of challenge. If it's a challenge, the, the 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 definition of challenge is get to the end of it, right? Let's see if you can if you can get to the end of this successfully, which you do, and it's really difficult and it takes a lot of commitment. However, the challenge ends and you're like, you it didn't it didn't stick. You didn't you didn't keep it because it was too extreme. Had you chosen the theory and the of of the of a program of any challenge. And you said, well, I love the fact that I'm going to, you know, do some self-help. And I love the fact that I'm going to really move my body twice a day to keep my metabolism, all these different parts of it. Or it could be any kind of um, 
of eating plan. I hate to use the word diet. I just don't like the word because I feel it it, it speaks to restriction. Um, and again, an unhealthy relationship with food, which which is the is the core of everything. Because when you finished your challenge, you 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 probably didn't maintain the gallon of water. You, you didn't probably maintain everything, or else you wouldn't have had to start it again because you would have been continuing it, right? So I did finish it, the whole program, but now I started over to do the live hard program again, 75 plus phase one, plus phase two, plus, plus phase three. But like you said, I did after that, I, I slowly, gradually went back into my old pattern of things as a, as a reward system. So, so that's right. when you said, exactly. oh, I, I, I have a list of food to check off. I'm like, yeah, I need to get with that. I need to get with like a, a, a something that's you're, more you're long the, term, which is more. Yeah, you're the Go personality ahead. that likes. Like, you're the personality that is so easy to work with because you like regiment. Tell me what to do, and I will I will do it. Right. So if I told you to ease up on yourself and to give yourself some some flexibility during the day. And let that carry through to the night and let it carry through not just 75 days, but always like it's it's better. This is the point. It's better to be consistently good than occasionally amazing because you can't be amazing all the time. And we're talking about your life. So by by you, your sugars are reacting to the fact that you're you're the sugars. And I don't mean just because of sugar. We're talking about carbohydrates, talking about m metabolism. Your body's reacting to the start and stop of this, to the two extremes, right? And I'm not saying you jump up here and go go off all at once. You're saying gradually things things you know migrate back up. Had you chosen to just um, pick something down the middle that you can sustain, your whole body is happier. Like there's no internal stress. Like you you may not realize it, but you have a lot of stress meeting the daily requirements of of hard seventy five. It it's work. You have a checklist. You can't go to sleep if you didn't get that other workout in because then you got to start over again. So I think you need you need to, after it, maybe consider a great pattern would be to pick something sustainable. So that goes in terms of weight for all of us too. Weight, we'll talk about that, not even body composition because you can weigh the same, you can weigh the same weight, but your body could be made up of muscle versus fat and, and you know, in a different proportion. There's two different kinds of fat in our body. There's there's fat on the outside of our body that we can burn off um, or use for energy called subcutaneous fat. That's between the muscle and the skin. But then there's a kind of fat called visceral fat, which is inside your body. It's over your organs. And it's the fat that people with high cholesterol um, or a heart, you know, heart issues or um it tends to become a health issue. And so if that number is over 10% visceral fat, it sort of, it wraps around our lungs a little bit. It compresses our heart. Um, it's internal and it, it could be dangerous and it, it is a risk factor. So it's not just about the number on the scale that you're at your, your fighting weight. You know what I mean? It's like, what is your body made of? And that that's not really all done with training. That's really done with what you fuel it with. I mean, training helps so much, keeping your body moving, keeping the oxygen flow, but we have to focus on what we're putting in our cars, you know, which is us. Um, Stacy, before, you know, we have like two, you know, couple, like three or four more minutes. Um, yeah. So does anybody else have any questions before we wrap this up? Yeah, I have a, I have a quick question, Stacy. You know, hey. uh, I see. Uh, ultra processed foods have been in the news a lot lately, and I think I have a feeling for where you stand on that issue. Um, but most, you know, energy drinks and gels and things to get you through a race are ultra processed. Are is that okay for the race because you're not making it a main part of your diet, or do you have recommendations for less processed, you know, drinks and foods? Or during a race? Yeah, that's a great question. Again, remember, we have the general nutrition, which is what we focus on for the majority of our of our food. But then when you're racing, it's really hard um, to avoid some of the processed foods. I mean, some of the gels are less ultra processed and, you know, than others. And you can find some that have pure ingredients. 
Um, but to be honest, if it has the sugar that you need in there in a form that your body can digest, everybody's bodies are different. So some honey stinger products are based on honey. Um, you know, you have different types of sugar. Some are slower burning, some are quicker. You'll look at your products and we could work one-on-one -on, -one on that if you want to run it past me. But the answer, the short answer is it's fine because what's going to happen is that you can try to um, create the food that's in there in the products, in real food, but then you're getting a lot of fiber with it. So if I want to eat dates on my bike, which I do, but I will balance that with some gels and I will obviously have my, you know, my nutrition in my bottle because if I ate just dates or I ate just pretzels, I, it, it's too much of my body to digest. We want to not have, our body does not, we don't want to have our body digesting food. That energy take, will take away from performance. So because the gel is practically digested for us already, right? Or uh, you can use an applesauce squeezy pouch, which is a great idea. But because it's like it's like being a baby, you want the baby food. You want it to be so easily accessible without your digestive system having to burn calories to break it down. You want to take it in, use it, and then you know what? We'll we'll let our liver clear out everything, you know, uh, with the rest of the of the week uh, when we're not training. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Stacey. This has been wonderful. Could you provide us with your contact information? Yeah. Uh, a couple of people just asked me for it. So yeah, I mean, if you guys, I mean, I'd love to offer it to you guys. If you have any sort of question, you can just email me directly at um, info dot positive plates nutrition one word at gmail dot com. And I'll answer any of your questions. Um, and also I'll send um, Hillary to, dis to disseminate to you guys the snack list that might help. And there's one other thing, um, I call it a power pantry. And what this is, it's a list that if you have these foods in your house, um, you can put a meal together that will give you benefit as an athlete at any time. So it's just a, it's just a list of items you could keep in your pantry, um, you know, in your freezer perhaps. And that that's a lifesaver a lot of the time. Terrific. Thank you so You're much. Awesome. I wish everybody really? luck with their season. Great, great information. Thank you. Well, thank you, Hillary. Thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you for your time. You as well. I'll be in oh. touch with you, Stacey. That sounds great, David. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bye. Thank so you Hillary. Be well. Bye. Be well.